Um, yes, sir. But it turns out that under our assumption of I'm just going out for one thing and coming back, you would never use that. I mean, in theory land. Yeah, that, that's a question for you to answer as, <laughs> as the manager. I mean, yeah, the question was, how do you how do you direct a worker in this kind of space? It's an excellent question, particularly if you start to think about designs that would look probably very different than this for order picking. OK, let's say I have a crazy aisle design and I say it's optimal for order picking. OK, great. Well, how do I tell him to do, you know, go over hook two lefts and then, you know, take a 45 degree down to some look? That's a challenge. Yeah, directing workers to do good paths. At some, at some point, you're sort of relying on their intuition, their ability to just sort of cognitively figure out, hey, that's a shortcut. I'm taking it. OK, the question was, um, is this, does this assume some level of automation on the information side? for example, that would direct putaways in particular areas and that sort of thing? Uh, the answer is no. Um, it is an important issue, though, if you've got a warehouse management system, to be able to tell it, this is what my warehouse looks like. We've had some interesting conversations with warehouse management uh, software types. Ooh, wow, we don't really have locations that look like that in our sort of map of locations. So that's something to think about as well. All right, let me get on to some photographs and then we can, uh, I think this will probably generate several questions. And so this is the first warehouse. Now remember it had a whole bunch of block stacking down here and then I'm receiving from the top and I have this neck down to a, a short length of conveyor that's gonna have a stretch wrapper. Okay, you got the mental picture of, of this one. And I am actually on a um, uh, cherry picker or some kind of lift truck basically working platform near the um, focal point of the layout, okay? And I'm looking to the right down at that, uh, well, actually, it's not in the shipping area, but anyway. Uh, so I'm looking down to the right, and so you can see sort of the formation of blocks in this way. And then I'm going to show you a picture here, and then one here, and so on, okay, just to orient you as far as what you should be looking at here. Oh, boy. Let's see. Oh, I'm not plugged in. All right, that's not going to work. All right, so this is the, the, the photograph you just looked at was here. And now you can see all the product. Um, and these are those long blocks of six, three on each side. If you have a question as we go along here, um, feel free to ask. Now I'm going to give you one just to the left here. All right, now this is looking down the main V, if you will. And this is sort of fish bony looking. So you've got some aisles that are going off this way. And then you can see the aisles that are going straight toward the back of the warehouse this way. And this is the cut up into the space. You can see this is a pretty small warehouse, OK? And now this next one is straight on. So you were just looking this way. And now you're looking up into the center of the V. Again, now here actually is that short section of conveyor. And the stretch wrapper, I guess, is right here. And then the next one is going to go this way. This is looking down the other angle. And you can see there's a little bit of rack mixed in here that accommodated their particular operation. And then I think I've got one more. Yeah, interesting question. Um, as I said, one of the first places I gave this talk to was an uh, uh, assembly of um, rack manufacturers. <laughs> Greatest thing since, since sliced bread and thought they would just love me, actually just physically come up and embrace me and thank me for giving their industry something new to uh, crow about. Uh, in fact, what I got was hostility, and the first question was, what about the building columns? <laughs> and he was just very passionate about the fact that you can't do that. There's building columns and so on. And so I had the, um, <laughs> I, I didn't manage this very well, but I, I responded by asking, well, why not build the building around the rack? And that didn't really go over that well. So um, anyway, I sort of scampered out of there with my <laughs> tail between my legs.
you know, the thought that you would actually design the building around the operation was kind of weird. You know, why, why do that? So now I've had some fun talks with uh, um, contractors and architects and all kinds of people and, and this sort of thing. But you know, honestly, that's where I'm going with this. Guys, why don't we think about what's happening inside when we build the outside? Wow. Talk about your out of the box thinking. So anyway, uh, what was the question I got off on? <laughs> right, yes. Okay, yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, in this building, which uh, this is a leased facility. Yeah, this is leased. So they got the building and that was it. It was new, but it was here, 50 foot, boom, columns, that's it. And so, yeah, of course, we had to sort of, sort of adjust the design and move it. Okay, now this works and boom, we'll have no column problems. So we had to shoot straight up. Turns out that with 50, um, foot building columns, you got a lot of space in there to shoot an aisle up. You got quite a bit of leverage. Uh, no, no. At 50 feet between, you, you've really got a fair bit of leverage there. Not a lot, but you have some ability to jigger the angle. Depending on the operation, I mean, 45 for the standard square half warehouse, 45 is the right way to go. Yeah, but this happens not to conform to that. I don't know if you noticed from the drawing. In fact, the center, the, the focal point of this layout is actually to the left. It's off center. Yeah, for reasons that are kind of out, outside of the discussion. But again, all these reasons that the pure thing I showed you before will not work or that you can't just plunk it down. I mean, every warehouse has all of its little idiosyncrasies, as you well know. And so the message I want to leave you with is just the inspiration of doing something different and asking, hey, could we adapt and change and maybe bend it over this way and flop these that way and get any benefit? That's what I want you to leave with. All right, so that's that. Let me get on here a little bit more quickly. Uh, uh, that's kind of a duplicate, actually. This is more about the rack. All right, there's a picture of the stretch wrapper for those of you who sure you've all seen stuff like that. All right, now actually I'm on the truck and I'm gonna be driving up the aisle, up the right uh, angled aisle this way. And I'm looking to the right, taking a photograph. And I'll just show you a few of those pictures here as we get on. Again, still driving. Now, notice this little island of product here, okay? You sort of end up with these if you just do it. And in fact, I got another picture of this. I was so proud that they did that, that I got a nice close-up of it. Uh, this is what you get sort of at that corner, this little bitty leftover that you want to fill with product. So there it is. By the way, one of the nice things about block stacking is if you don't like this, you can undo it in about a weekend. <laughs> so they had already thought about that, by the way. <laughs>